Hey everybody, this is Tuesday morning, uh, September 8th, September 8th. Boy, it's good to see you all. Glad that you're here. It's always good to connect in this kind of way. It's so important to connect in our spiritual lives, uh, to encourage one another. And it kind of keeps us all con not only connected relationally, but it kind of supports us in our, in our journeys uh, of faith that each of us are on. So it's so important. So good to see you. Uh, Sunday was good. Thank you, Sue, for a great day of, of, of reflections and prayer yesterday. And uh, we look forward to another good week. Uh, let me make some announcements. Uh, a little bit long today, but some announcements. First, Sue uh, explained nicely. Reservations for church. Calling in saying, I intend to be there at church. Helps us uh, in two or three ways. It helps us Make sure we have enough people at check-in, enough people to help everyone get seated, enough people to support uh, those that are coming. We want you to come, and uh, we don't want anything to get in the way. And if you fail to make a reservation, if you decide at the last minute, if something changes, just come on over, come on down. We'd love to have you. But for those that are able to give us that kind of heads up, uh, it just allows us to kind of plan and accommodate. You see, we envision uh, eventually having to use some overflow space. Uh, we also envision uh, possibly if, if people are coming back enough to go to two worship times where everybody can experience a sanctuary if, 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 if they desire. Uh, we're looking at all kinds of different ways to use the space in the building, and it, it's an exciting time. Uh, I see a lot of opportunity that God is presenting to us, and uh, we're pursuing them in all directions at once, but uh, hopefully with God's discipline and God's direction. So if you're able to make a reservation, 899-5962, it'd be great. Don't let that stop you if you do not. We want to see you. Uh, we think it makes a difference. We think that being together uh, enhances not only your experience, but the experience of the church. And uh, we want to encourage the streaming audience to continue to tune in. But uh, we really do have two different formats that are now available, in-person worship, and then, of course, the streaming version. Uh, we are also asking you to call 899-5962. Can you say that after me? 899-5962. That's the church office. Uh, Jim Leffler ran a little video on Sunday. We'll be running some more of that video. Uh, inviting people that might want to learn more about the basics of the Christian faith. It's more than basics. It's, it's the core doctrines of it through a format called Alpha. Uh, we've done Alpha a number of times. We've always had two or three small groups that come out of that birthing experience of small groups. But it's also helped people realize the power of living in the Holy Spirit. It, 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 it's, it's a guided direction. It's a way of, of learning and uh, experiencing God in a new sort of fresh way. And Jim Leffler and his wife, Chris, are going to be offering us a Zoom experience on Monday nights. If you would like to be part of Alpha through the Zoom network with Jim Leffler and Chris, Monday nights are the night for you. Let us know at the church, 899-5962. Also, uh, Sean Gotham is looking for a group of men that will help him lead and then a group of men to participate in a in a curriculum that we picked out very carefully very prayerfully called band of brothers but we know that men have a different way of connecting sometimes and uh, if we could find a group start a group of five six seven eight men 10 12 15 men or more uh, let us know at the church 899-5962 we're trying to get the leadership team together and then kicking off in october also, we are looking to use the church in more productive and efficient ways. We know that homes aren't always conducive to small group gatherings. If you would like to use the church facility for your small group or for a small group gathering, let us know at the church office, 899-5962, 899-5962. Let us know at the church. Finally, uh, we'll be starting uh, the end of September through probably next spring a church-wide emphasis on prayer. We've taught on prayer, we've talked about prayer, but we've never 
infuse the church with the culture of prayer. With God's help, uh, we'll be doing that more and more. We have a, a little bit of a lead team uh, that will help us in that way. We'll be recruiting others to help us in various facets. But prayer is a lifeline for the Christian. There's nothing that Jesus did more more definitely than leave his group and pray alone. Private prayer has a place. Group prayer has a place. Power prayers have a place. If you would like to move your prayer life from a rote, uh, simple repeating of prayers to a vital and dynamic prayer life, we've got many opportunities that we're looking at. One of them is going to be, we'll be using a book called Battle Plan for Prayer. Uh, we would like to put one in everyone's hands who would like to have one. If you would like to have a copy, if you'd like to buy a copy, I guess it is, Battle Plan for Prayer, 899-5962. More importantly, uh, I, along with others, will be streaming a weekly teaching on prayer beginning the last Wednesday in September. And uh, we're looking for a group of people that might be part of a studio audience that can engage and ask questions and might be a part of that, of that gathering experience. We're not sure if we're going to do it Wednesdays during the daytime or Wednesdays in the evening. If you're interested in being part of the live audience, 899-5962. And uh, Barb will be glad to help you with that. Uh, we'll be setting that up uh, more likely during the daytime, but let us know if you would prefer evening or afternoon time to be part of a group teaching on prayer that will be then streamed and available uh, on our website for anyone who wants to tune in and, and be a part of that weekly teaching and the devotional uh, plan, the, the, the handbook for prayer that we'll be looking at and using for the next number of months. Friends, I'm excited by all the different things that are happening at the church. As a staff, we're realigning the staff a little bit so that we can better meet the needs of the, of the church. And uh, these new times are calling for adapting. And our board is looking at a book that's challenging us on how we should be adapting to the environment and the new realities. Pray for us in these ways. Friends, I've just taken seven minutes. I'm so sorry that I've done that. But now you know. Dear God, help us in our brief study today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We are studying today Philippians chapter 3, only two verses, 12, 13, and 14. 3, 12 through 14. Let me read those verses to you. Not that I have already obtained all this, or have already achieved my goal. What's he referring to? If you bump back up in the previous paragraph, you'll see exactly what he's talking about. In the previous prior paragraph, Paul is realizing that for most of his life, he majored in minors. Have you ever majored in things that don't really matter? You get consumed, you spend your day on things that don't really matter. I've done that in my work life. I've done that in my personal life. I've majored in minors. When I look back at some of my work days at Meadowbrook, saying, why did I worry about all that? Why did I lose all that sleep? Why did I put in all that time? In retrospect, I could have spent my time more wisely and productively had I done different things. Paul is realizing and reflecting on his life, that he spent all of his life in academic study and the study and the pursuit of God and holiness as the religious establishment taught it. But once he met Jesus, he realized it was all wasted. He was majoring in minors. He wasn't majoring in the things he should be. He wasn't focusing on knowing and experiencing Jesus the Christ. And I want to challenge you today. Do you want to know Jesus the Christ? Do you want to experience the vitality and spiritual life that only Jesus opens the door for? That's what we're doing today, is we're encouraging one another to go from the, the, the perspective of this world to the perspective of the world to come. The perspective that comes into us and begins to take root in us through the Holy Spirit. And while someday it will be all the world that we know, today we live in one world, but we're experiencing the spiritual reality of the Holy Spirit, of knowing Jesus in a real way. And that's what we want to invite you to do. Uh, 
that's what uh, we're referring to in verse 12 when he says, I've obtained all this. Paul's talking about how his life in some ways has been wasted because he spent so much time on things that didn't matter. But now that he knows things, he wants to focus on Jesus Christ. And he wants to help other people focus on Jesus Christ. So he, he writes, he goes to prison uh, if need be, so that others can learn about Jesus the Christ. It says in verse 13, Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. He says, See, I'm on my way, but I'm not there yet. So I forget what's past, and I strain forward. He uses the metaphor of an athlete. You don't look backwards, you look forwards. You don't care what's been done. You press on towards the goal to win the prize that God has called us heavenward. That we are to live like heavenly creatures. We are to experience God and experience life as though we're already beginning to realize the, the, the power of God's resurrection, God's conquering of sin, and the power that will come to set all things new, all things right one day. We press on. Second Timothy 2 verse 5 says, Anyone who, who competes in a race must understand the rules. But by except by competing according to the rules, friends, we must know the rules. We must be in the strict training. First Corinthians nine twenty four to twenty seven talks about the importance of training. Philippians one thirteen to fourteen talks about the importance of being focused. First Timothy four. 7 through 10 talks about the importance of exercise or discipline, of reading the Bible, reflecting the Bible, spending time in prayer, of serving others, the means of grace that opens us up to the life of Christ. 2 Timothy 4, 7 to 8 talks about uh, that we are in a fight of epic proportion, of good versus evil. Last week, some of you have teased me about talking about Jedis for Jesus, but friends, we are in every bit the battle that the Star Wars movie depicted in the secular world. We are involved with that in the spiritual world. Ultimate good versus ultimate evil. We know, we believe that ultimate good is going to prevail. That God's forces are, 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 are already won. When Jesus rose from the dead, he conquered the power of sin and death. And the ultimate victory is just a matter of time when Jesus comes again and makes all things right. The question I have for you is, will you be a part of that gathering? Will you be part of the children of God? Will you be part of the kingdom of God right now? Friends, here's what Paul's saying in verses 12 through 14. We need to train like an athlete, but in the spiritual realm. We need a desire, we need to be determined, and we need to be disciplined. Desire, determination, and discipline, the three Ds, desire, determination, and discipline. Are you prepared to help further your journey of faith? Paul's saying, I'm not there yet, but I'm going, and I want to bring everybody with me that I can, so come on board. And I say, as a pastor of South Harbor Creek Church, come on board. We're going to be giving new invitations on how you might encourage yourself and those closest to you to grow in the faith and knowledge and experience of Jesus the Christ. Sue Fuller will be working more and more with, with, with families of teens and with teens, challenging them how they can know Jesus more. Linda Morey, through small groups and through music, will be helping us to experience the reality and the power of Jesus. And of course, in my teaching and preaching, I hope to be doing the same. We, the board, will be adding some capacity that we can minister more effectively. We know we've not been covering all the bases and we extend that to you. And I invite you to join with me in a renewed journey of faith this fall, winter, and spring. Come with me as we, as a church, not only seek to know God more through prayer, but we seek to know God more through the Christian life. Desire, do you want it? Determination, are you determined? and discipline. Are you willing to exercise and do those things that will help open the door to new realities that Paul tells us, that I tell you, that I know for a fact exceeds any, any joy, any satisfaction the world offers you, is at the nth degree, the exponential level, 
God wants you to be a child of God and to experience life with the victory that only God can offer you. So I ask you, what kind of race are you running for Jesus? What prizes in life do you seek? The prizes of this world or the prizes of the world to come? What kind of opposition do you face? Do you expect opposition? We should. For as soon as we begin the journey of sanctification, of growing in the faith and trust in God, the evil one will come to, to, to thwart us, to derail us, and to pull us back. How can Jesus help you? I've been using my hands and you've not been seeing it on the screen. How can Jesus help you stay on track? Are you willing to join me on a new regime of diet and exercise as we prepare ourselves to be spiritually fit for the world and the joy and the life to come? In all these things, I pray for you. God bless you. And may you have one of the best days of the rest of your life, beginning right here, right now, today. God bless. Bye-bye.